So, I'm sitting here in, in the TV sofa yeah. <laughs> together with David from Trino. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming and thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. So, so, David, literally like two years ago, yep. you, you were kind enough to, to, to have a course for me uh, in advanced Trino calibration yeah. down here at the headquarters yep. in Paris. I think you and I left uh, for you left for UK. I left for Sweden. Yeah, that's it. And we Literally like two days before the world shut down. <laughs> I've seen you since, so yeah, uh, it's great to see you back. Yeah. So how have you been? Very good. Yeah. I mean, it's been a, a very interesting time. Obviously, adjusting our, our work habits, and you know what's really come out of it as a, as, as an audio company um, is the ability for us to be able to remotely calibrate units. Yeah. Um, you know, I know um, it's not the the ideal situation, but actually. You know, you can really get very, very good results um, even in that scenario. So, you know, we've been doing a lot of that. And of course, we've been, you know, uh, concentrating on R&D and, you know, all the other stuff that we do and, and, and the other stuff that we don't get time to do. Um, we've, we've now had that bandwidth to get up and up to speed with. So, yeah, it's been a very different environment working, but um, yeah, no less enjoyable. Yeah. And, and uh, just a month or two ago, uh, you guys gave us four more channels. We did, yeah. So again, this is all part of the, um, you know, remote working sort of uh, structure that we've that we've that we've had. Um, you know, it's really enabled us to 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 think outside the box. And our wonderful R and D engineers, um, you know, we set them a challenge and and they delivered. So yeah, yeah four channels free of charge. Um, just a you know, just pass. Just a general, it's okay. yeah. It's very casual. <laughs> <laughs> just a general, uh, you, you know, uh, stereo DAC required for for each each stereo pair, and yeah. uh, and off you go. So yeah, yeah. nice innovation. And, I, I, I know you guys started up started out with doing it with ADAT, and, and being yeah. an old ADAT guy, sure. I thought, yeah, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> and, eh. No. Yeah, you uh, you knew better. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I know. I knew the hard way, uh, and now you do too. Yeah, and actually, yeah. you know, and we found it as well. You know, while we were doing our testing, um, you know, we we just found that the sample rate conversion was not smooth yeah. in, in a in a vast number of units, and yeah. you know, we 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 kind of knew that would be the case. But in the end, actually, switching to uh, you know just a, a, st a standard sort of uh, PCM stereo output, yeah, it was actually a lot better because you know. Those channels can be used if a, if a customer wants to use a high-end DAC for a, a stereo solution. Yeah. Um, not as a, not not strictly as a second zone, but you know as a second system in a system. Yeah. Um, so actually, for the market, it worked better. So yeah, yeah one of those fortunate um, uh, re-engineering exercises that turned out to be better results. Yeah. So yeah. 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 And, and being a trainer installer myself, uh, uh, I always tell people that. Trinov is basically the only system that's software upgradable. Like you guys, you're just adding four more channels. Tell me another system that just can add four more channels. <laughs> the other systems, they, they are bound by, by DSP processing yep. and, and fixed uh, hardware software architecture. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you and guys, it's your proprietary stuff. You yeah. basically own we're in control. everything. We're in control. And that's the key to it. You know, we, 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 we don't use a third party measurement system. Our measurement system is our own microphone. It's our own algorithms. It's our own software. It's everything. Yeah. Um, and you know that's not to be underestimated. You know when no. you when you're tied by a third party, you're tied by limitation, yeah. either by the DSP chip in terms of processing or headroom, um, or by the correction system, by internet, or you know simple things like that. Yeah. So you know there's a lot of advantages, um, and you know the reason why we've chosen to go down the route we have. Yeah. And, and speaking about the microphone. Yeah. I don't know if we have a picture of it here, but I don't know if we've got one to hand. I, 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 I run always, and get one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always show the microphone when I do a train of demos. I show the microphone and I tell my customer or potential customers that that this microphone it's the it's a third of the magic with train of. Absolutely. Because because it has four capsules, mm -hmm. so it, it it will when you set it up, it will measure your system, your speakers, and it will know. Exactly by, is it two centimeters or one centimeter? So, well, two, one centimeter plus minus. <laughs> yeah, plus minus. So two centimeters. Yeah, exactly. And like yeah. one degree. And um, one degree, yeah. So, so, so when you have your, your Dolby Atmos set up, the, the Trino system, due to the, to the unique microphone, will know exactly where each speaker is positioned. And another cool thing is that when you move the microphone mm -hmm. to another position, the system knows where the microphone is. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I mean, we can... And how about that? Is, is, so you think that that's a vital thing to know when you do your second, third, fourth and fifth measurement, that the system knows where the measurement mic is? Yeah, and it's, it's, it is an important factor. And, you know, we can, we can obviously only do time alignment to one position. That's, that's, yeah, that's, a, known, sure. that's a known known. But of course, the spatial averaging, um, you know, we can you know, smooth out that bass response in particular and... and, and in and, particular, and, the bass response, yeah. because you need to space the micro, the, your measurement points, right? Exactly, yeah. Low and, you know, but also it helps with the high frequencies. If a yep. speaker doesn't perform well off, off axis, yep. by knowing that, we know not to drive it. Yeah. You know, so it, it's about as what we do do as, what, as much as what we don't do as well. You yeah. know, we, we always do processing within safe limits and, you yeah. know, try to be respectful of, uh, of the hardware and not cause uh, any damage in that way. Yeah. So this is our 3D mic uh, for those of you that haven't seen it. So I uh, just give you a, a brief overview of, uh, of what this is, because it's a, a very different uh, tool to, to, to most omnidirectional microphones that you see. So we have the four capsules here, OK, in a mathematical uh, tetrahedral pattern, OK? You'll notice that the capsules are also very, very small. Okay, now this really helps um, when measuring um, height speakers and of course uh, in the high frequencies as well. So the, the smaller the capsule, the better. So that's why we keep them really small. Um, this is a very, very accurate microphone. So it's accurate to uh, plus or minus uh, 0.1 dB and can actually locate your speakers um, to within a centimeter of uh, its actual location in the space. So we pick up the azimuth so uh, the elevation of your speakers, and we actually map it as part of the calibration process. So um, yeah, we, we know exactly where your speakers are. Now, the reason why we do this is first of all, very, very accurate time alignment, um, but also it enables our proprietary 3D remapping uh, technology as well. So 3D remapping serves two, for, two purposes. Um, the main one is that not all codec manufacturers can decide A, what their speakers are called uh, in terms of, uh, you know, left top front or height top front, whatever they want to call it. Um, but also their positions are slightly different as well. DTS, Dolby, Oro, they all have, and of course IMAX, um, have very slightly different um, you know, ideas on where the speakers should go. So what this actually allows us to do is take your actual position of your speaker, reference it to the, uh, the reference position for that codec, and we can actually artificially move that speaker uh, using a triangulation method and some very quite clever uh, software. Okay, so it allows you to have um, multiple formats correctly played back in a, in a single speaker array, um, but it also allows you to overcome a couple of problems. So, you know, where you might have a window or you might have a door, um, typical example where you've got a TV and a speaker below the, the center channel, below the TV. Okay, we can actually raise that up so you get that central imaging that you're used to with a, a two-part projection system. So yeah, it's, um, it's the secret source that uh, it, it, it is what Trinov is. Um, the tri, the tri in Trinov stands for 3D innovation and it really starts with this microphone. Another thing that, that is interesting with, with Trinov processing is that, that it's basically the, the only room speaker calibration system that works tremendously well for both music and home cinema. Yeah. And, and I tell people that, you know, meeting you guys, as, I, as far as I know, you, when you upgrade and, and improve your algorithm, you try it out on music. Absolutely. Because that's how it started 20 of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, we're all sort of, you know, audiophiles by nature, um, by yeah. hobby or by education. Um, yeah. You know, obviously all of our R&D engineers and, you know, our founders, you know, Ar um, Arno uh, Labory was, uh, was president of his hi-fi club. Um, Remy uh, and Sebastian, um, who are the other two founders, uh, both play classical instruments, um, you know, to a very high level. So, you know, and then feeding through R and D through the pro engineer, ex pro recording studio engineers, and so it, it runs. It runs through us. It certainly runs through us. Yeah, yeah. and and it it just works tremendously well. And yeah. it, and it's so fun when I when I show the system to to old. Uh, Hi-fi buffs, you know, <laughs> yeah, old guys that, you know, they want their system clean, yeah. crystal clean, just, you know, a vinyl player going through a preamp to, to, to amplifiers out to the speakers and nothing else, no filtering or anything. And, and that's their, their, uh, their, their, their purity, perfection, their, yeah. their yeah. perfection. And when I show it the Trino system, yeah, either with subwoofers or, or just time aligning, face aligning and, and frequency aligning, 
uh, a pair of, of uh, uh, hi-fi speakers. Yep. They just go, ooh, and, and, and I can see how they, how they try to process things. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very different listening experience. And, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it takes getting used to. Yeah. You know, coming into the shop, having a demo is great. But really, you know, if it's demoed as you do regularly yeah. in yeah. people's homes, allow them to sit with the unit for two, you know, a few days, whatever you yeah. guys agree, yeah, yeah, yeah. and get used to that sound because it's so different. Yeah. It's so clear and transparent that you're not listening to the coloration either caused by the speaker design or the room. Yeah. Um, you know, it can't get rid of everything, of course. You know, some natural acoustic treatment or, or, or yeah. you know, going further does help. Um, but it's a very different experience. Yeah. And, and I, I usually end up saying, it doesn't do anything bad, right? Mm. <laughs> because yeah. that's enough yeah, for them. Absolutely. Then, then they just go, ooh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and when I demo it, either at their home, mm -hmm. which I do regularly, with, with the train of Amethyst, yeah. which is a fantastic four channel unit, but also showing, uh, I have a, a friend, a uh, customer, that, that, that I show his room. I've got videos oh, of it. Yes, of yeah, and, and uh, it can switch between hi-fi and, and a Dolby Atmos setup in like just switching a preset. Yep. And um, yeah, then, then they really understand that the coin falls down. And, and the, they... the, the one I always do is, a, is an off-axis listening position. Yeah. as well that's really fun to do that's yeah. just like how how can the central image be absolutely <laughs> perfect you know yeah. way way off axis yeah and that's a really nice thing to do you know yeah. it, it it builds an empathy for what dsp can do you know yeah. dsp can't solve everything no but there are no such thing as perfect speakers or perfect rooms so no. you know you can find that compromise it is possible yeah i've, I've actually had two uh, swedish speaker designers rather good ones uh, i've demoed trim uh, trino for them and both individually have said, I can't fix this in the analog domain. Yeah. And you can't. Yeah, because you know, if you fix one thing, you add two, two other problems, yeah. usually. I mean, we're, we're loved, you know, Trinov Audio are loved by speaker manufacturers for two reasons. One, because we help them sell more speakers, <laughs> yeah. because, you know, multiple channels, etc. cetera. Um, but also because of the measurement tool. Yeah. Um, you know, they, a lot of them use it in really practical, you know, outside of the anechoic chamber. Um, you know, in real practical applications for proper critical listening. Yeah. Um, you know, and and it's it's a tool as much as it is a uh, you know a, 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 a solution to the problems. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And we don't hide anything. You know, all the information is there in the graph data. You yeah. know, it's not a stick a microphone on a tripod, walk away, come back, and it's done everything. Yeah. It tells you what it's done. It shows you what it's done. It shows yeah. you the before and after results and the filter, so you can understand where the problems come in. And just going back to the microphone for two seconds, those four capsules, they give us another opportunity to detect um, reflected sound as well as the direct sound coming from the speaker because they're two very different problems. You know, one is uh, including the room energy and yep. you can do something about it. And then there's obviously the direct, which is, you know, your, your crossover phase and that sort of stuff. So yep. there's, a, you know, there's, there's a lot we can do. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic system. So, so just recently, you guys gave us four more channels. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the Trino of Altitude 16 is actually a Trino of Altitude 20 now. Yeah, we won't rename it, but... <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> no. That, that, it, it'd be confusing. Exactly, yeah. We'll keep it as the... As 16 plus, plus four. four. Yeah, plus four. There you go. Yeah. Got it. And, and, and the big brother, Trino of Altitude 32, four more channels, uh, 36 then. And was it IMAX? Yeah, IMAX enhanced, enhanced as well. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, some some updates to the optimizer as always. Yep. Um, and we got more planned for the for the rest of the year. Um, yeah. So what plans do you have? I find it difficult to. Uh, <laughs> no worries, guys. <laughs> Just two we, guys we, having a chat. We, you know, we're actually on sitting here. sitting in a in a <laughs> corridor here, and and now it's packing up with people. Yeah. It's good. They, 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 it's Friday afternoon. They've uh, come from directly from work. And uh, actually, I think they're going to, to after work yeah, come party to the after this. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, so we, 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 you know, we've got more updates coming this year. I won't, I won't announce anything live because um, we have, uh, you know, it's a very challenging time at the moment to be a product manufacturer, yeah. um, just with you know procurement of products yeah. and parts and all that sort yeah. of stuff. So you know, we are having to divert our limited resources, you know, to different areas. So. Yeah. I don't want to put a date out there and then disappoint people, but we do have some really significant updates coming, both to the optimizer um, and to uh, you know Dolby 1.8, uh, the new the new uh, 
uh, version of the Dolby uh, code is being developed on as well. So a number of advantages are being bought by that. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can announce more later in the year once we're, we're, we're certain on timeline. Yeah, perfect. All right. Yeah, so so David, yeah, great meeting you. Yeah, again. <laughs> I was just, it, you know, it's so nice to be out and about and, yeah. you know, um, get to see customers again, get to see, all, you know, friends. And uh, that's what this industry is about. And uh, yeah, we've missed it over the last couple of years. Yeah, so. yeah. And if you liked our chat, please check out trainoff.com and you will have more information about their fantastic products. They are, are available for hi-fi and home cinema and actually also for professional sound, which I do the train of Demon 6 and Demon 12. Fantastic units. If you need any information from me, please contact me on, on uh, Immersive Sound Tech. And uh, please subscribe and push that little notification button and you will get more in-depth videos with me. Cheers.